on the outside, but it is still a worship service as we give God thanks. I meant to invite us to just pause a moment and let us pray. We are most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need and your sustaining grace. That Lord God, as we come together to give you thanks for the life of Warren, and as we lay him to rest, O oh God, we pray that you will strengthen us. You will bring comfort to those who mourn. Remind us, Lord God, that weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so, Lord God, assure us, O oh Lord, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And so, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, infuse us with the strength and the courage we need to go on. And so, Lord God, we pray that as you comfort your troubled children, you'll give them the grace. Because your word tells us, oh God, to come boldly to the throne of grace and receive grace and mercy for the hour of need. This is the hour of need, oh God, for the Bridgin family. And so, Lord God, we pray that as you comfort them, you strengthen them. You will draw them to you, O oh God, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, remind us, O oh God, that it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. And so God, give, help us to prepare our hearts to meet you, because, Lord, indeed, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. So, Almighty and Eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, has given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We are met in this solemn moment to commit Warren Bligin into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed, and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us recall the words of scripture as we listen to the reading from Psalm 24 to be read by Ochain Bligin. Odin Bligin. Psalm 24, from verse 1 to the verse 10. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He that hath clean hands and pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory, Selah. Thanks be to God. We come today in a time that none of us have ever seen before. A time when we can't even hug our loved ones when they mourn. And this morning when I sat down, I saw a message and I saw it was from Facebook. And I said to myself, but you don't use Facebook. Anyway, I clicked on it. But when I read the note, I realized I have no more hush for me to give. Because every time I turn around, someone else has gone. Every time I turn around, it's either a family, a friend, or someone you know who knows someone who has died. And today, we bury Warren. And the eulogy is in there. But I just want to point out to you that Warren is a first child, so we share a common thing, being first child. He attended Frank Field all age. We 
you don't share that. He went to public training center. We don't share that. He was a good woodworker. We don't share that. But we share one thing, that we know that we are human beings. And therefore, it's important that we apply our hearts to wisdom. So Psalm 90, verse 12 tells us, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Let us pray. Father, we come before you seeking to hear from you. We pray especially, Lord God, that you will speak to all of us. Speak through me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. My brothers and sisters, I want to pause on behalf of the Frankfield Methodist Church to offer condolences to O.K., okay, to Miss Sylvie, to the whole family. But as I pause to offer condolence, this month today when I was leaving school, I realized, well, that is your cousin who you are going to bury too. But I pray that God will give us the grace and the strength that is needed. The other children, his son, Odin, we pray that in this difficult time, you will find the grace and the strength to trust God, knowing that there's no God like Jehovah. I want to just share with you briefly that if we are going to number our days and apply our heart to wisdom, the numbering of days is not just counting one, two, three, because like Sparrow's song, age is just a number. And so when you look at Warren's age, the word of God tells you that by reason of strength, you can go on to 80. And so when I read this morning that a this friend of mine said that when he goes to the doctor, they said, life begins at 50, not at 40. And when they, then when he goes to the doctor at 70, so they tell him life begins at 80. And so we continue to change the number. And so we see in the people say, 50s and 60s are now the new 40. And so the my post keeps shifting. But my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how far the light post shifts to. The measuring stick of your life is that only what is done for Jesus Christ will last. No matter what you have done, no matter what you have accomplished, no matter what you have acquired, it means nothing. Because we come into this world with nothing and we leave with nothing. And so I want to just share with you briefly that if we are going to make our days count, then we must pay attention to our conduct. How do we conduct our lives? Are we living lives that bring glory to God? How do we conduct ourselves in the presence of our children? Do they see Jesus Christ living in us when we claim that we are Christians? When we say that we belong to Jesus and the world cannot see him living in us, let us remind ourselves that the only Bible some people read is our lives. And therefore, we need to conduct ourselves in such a way that God is always glorified. And if we are going to make each day count, we must conduct ourselves as if we serve a God who is eternal, immortal, invisible, and wise. Not only are we to conduct ourselves in a manner that shows that we know that there's a God, and that we know that only what is done for him will last. We should display an attitude of gratitude for each day. Today we wake up and we are able to move. We climb the hill and we are over here. But how many of us have paused to say thank you Lord when we wake up this morning? Because many a times we set the alarm clock whether one of our watches are on our phone. But that's not what wake us up in the morning. It is just by God's grace that you and I are still alive. And the fact that we are alive for another day gives us one more chance to seek him while he may be found, to call upon him while he is near. For the word in Jeremiah tells us, if we seek him with all our hearts, we shall find him. And so today, as we mourn the death of Warren, we let us also realize that every one of us 
is going to die unless Jesus comes before. And if he comes before, he's going to ask us and we're going to have to answer to what we would have done with our lives. So I would encourage us to have an attitude of gratitude, giving God thanks for each moment, living a life in such a way that we reflect Jesus Christ living in us. And therefore, our relationships are going to be sound and first our relationship with God. We want the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. It therefore means, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter what you would have done or gained in life if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The day is coming when you will hear, depart from me, I know you not. And so it doesn't matter how young you are, it doesn't matter how old you are, only what is done for Jesus Christ will last. And so I'd encourage us, especially in this COVID period, where if we get sick and go to the hospital, hardly anybody can come to see us. I remember my cousin got sick the other day, and the name had only three names on the list who could visit him. And so all his friends came, but they just had to stand at the door and turn away. Because this is COVID, and they say all this, they're not allowing persons to visit. It therefore means, my brothers and sisters, your relationship with God becomes imperative, also your relationship with each other. And I would encourage us that the word of God tells us that we are to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, with all our strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. It therefore is important, my brothers and sisters, that your relationship with your neighbors be something you look at if you're going to make each day count. And learn to love yourself. When you look in the mirror and you see yourself fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, made with wisdom, made with the ability to choose, choose Jesus Christ. And let that be the relationship that is the most important in your life. And as you are thinking about your conduct, your attitude and your relationship, let each of us be an example of godliness to someone else. Let each of us be an example of right living. Because it is only by the blood of Jesus Christ that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our filthy rags, but he sees us covered over with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so today I want to encourage us. Yes, there's nothing else to be done for worrying, but he would have had to make it right with God. But every one of us here has one more chance. One more chance to say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole life I'll agree, and the answer will be yes, Lord, yes. You see, my brothers and sisters, my challenge to you is, is your life worth living? Because unless you are living for Jesus Christ, then your living is in vain. I challenge you, therefore, to make each day count in your conduct, in your attitude, in your relationship, and in your example of godliness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are Jehovah Rapha, healing God. You are Jehovah Rohi, the Good Shepherd. And so, Lord God, we pray that as you wrap your arms around us, and you guide us and you direct us, help us to listen to that still small voice beckoning us to seek you and to seek you first. And so, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will trouble every one of us until we have surrendered our will to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want to invite missionary Velma Bligin to pray for the bereaved family. I'm just going to pray for you at this time. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you today. We thank you, God. We thank you for your word to our heart. We thank you for your blessing. God, we thank you for being for each and every one of us today. And Father God, at this time, 
you know every family, the children, grandchild. Lord, I pray at this moment that you bring comfort to their soul. Hallelujah. Comfort them, God, in the name of Jesus. Reach out and touch them, God. Hallelujah. And Father God, I just want to thank you for everything. Lord, you know the heart, you know the mind, you know their desire, their determination. Father, we leave them in your hands. And Father God, I pray blessing on everyone at this time. Help them one more time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We continue in prayer as we give God thanks. Praise be to you, O God, O Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty in glory. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. As we prepare ourselves for the commendation, eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for redemption, we commend our brother Warren to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto him, and let perpetual light shine upon him as we all pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we prepare ourselves for the actual committal. So we're going to ask that we do the actual committal right here and as we invite the pod bearers to come. And so we do the committal and then when the pod bearers, while the pod bearers come, we will sing.
neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Since our brother has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in his mercy has taken him to himself, we therefore commit his body to the ground. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in the time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and the steadfastness in the service of your name, and the doing of your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Support us, O Lord, all the day long this troubled life, until the shadows lend to the evening come. The busy world is hushed, then fever, then favor of light is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodgment, holy rest, and peace at last, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> As the workmen seal, we'll sing some choruses. Come on. Come speak it. I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world. No more. No Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
have taken all my sins. I love that man, that man from Galilee. I love that man.